Hi, Jean. We're gonna get started on a book club now. So, uh, for the last two weeks, we have been uh, discussing paragraph by paragraph. I'm gonna refresh as well. That what are we really talking about uh, in the first chapter? Uh, did you happen to read it? Mm -hmm. So the chapter is all about uh, getting into meditation and what really is meditation, you know. So the first chapter is discussing that how not to get into meditation. Like don't don't be going in as uh, as a seeker or as a knower. Just go in as you know as something new that you haven't discovered. Just go in the unknown without expectations and without any thoughts. So this is what we are discussing in the first chapter is in depth that why and how we are getting into uh, you know the, the part of meditation. So for now we are on, chap on page 5 on the third paragraph. Hey, yeah, how are you? I, I, I have a coffee there. I can have a coffee there. Yeah, yeah, the coffee. Hello, hello. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, on the fifth page, the paragraph says, Why do you want to inquire in the first place? Is it because of knowledge we feel confident that we know? Or is it because we want to tell others that we know? So the question about inquiry is, is what really inquiry means has to be understood. As inquiry is not something that we seek a question to have an answer. An inquiry is much deeper. Whenever you ask question, you will be supplied with an answer. And with that answer, more question will arise, and then more answer. So it's, it's like a chain, it never ends. But when you inquire within, it has a different quality. Because when you inquire, it is not about knowing. It's deeper, it's more about realizations. Like I want to inquire with myself, what is my purpose on this planet? Who am I? When I go into those steps, then I don't seek answers. Then it is more like a journey. I know at this in this very moment, I'm in a I'm in a human suit, you know, where these nerves are controlling my movement. If I'm moving my hand, somehow my brain is controlling it. And as I'm speaking a language, somehow I've learned that language during my human years to communicate with others. But who really am I who is experiencing this life? That is an inquiry. And what really is consciousness that really, you know, brings forward this all, all that I'm perceiving. So when I go in with that inquiry, then I'm not seeking for answers. I'm not seeking for God. I'm not seeking for knowledge. I'm seeking for the journey that I, I want to, you know, that I'm living. So if, every time, remember not to ask questions, but always to inquire with it. So the second line says, is it because of knowledge we feel confident that we know? So as I always speak that we are conditioned from the beginning of a life to have all the knowledge in this world so that we can compete with others. So if I can sit in a group and I say that I know what a, uh, what an espresso is, for instance, or what a mocha is, then I feel like I know something. Whereas, you know, I can, I can feel confident, like I know something more than just a random guy who doesn't know what a coffee is. So it's like an egoistic concept of knowledge. You know, I have, I have an ego that I know something. I'm more knowledgeable than you are. That's how we are taught, like, you know, uh, growing up that, you know, we have to get perfect grades so that we can, we can compete with others and we be better. So that goes on throughout our life, cir uh, life circle that, you know, we somehow are always gaining knowledge, trying to be, trying to show someone something better. But whereas when you really get into within yourself, that is meaningless. Because the more knowledge you have, the more burden you have on yourself. Because more confined you are with your thought process, then you have to follow your knowledge. If someone says that A is for apple, then you have to confine to that throughout your life because you have to, you have to follow A is for an apple. And apple is red. I mean, you have to follow that. But in reality, apples are green too. So what is what? So that is why I always say, do not have knowledge. Knowledge is pain. Do not really get into knowledge. The more you know, the less you experience. It sounds also like knowledge would also limit you because then you would never be 
even aware to see that an apple could be green. You would be so focused on what an apple is, what you know, that you might miss the beauty and the diversity and the, the unlimited potential that can be offered. Try a green one because it tastes different from all the other ones. Yeah, but then the ego will claim, no, this is not an apple. This is, this is not right because apple is supposed to be there. Or is it because we want to tell others that we know? So this is a very uh, basic thing that, you know, this is the problem with spirituality as well, is that people who get into spiritual path or want to become a healer, they want to tell others everything what they have known on their path. So it's more like your half feet is in the bus and half feet is on the ground. So you are nowhere. You, the only reason you get into spirituality is because you want to gain the knowledge and come out and tell others that I know everything. But at the but the core depth of getting into spiritualism or meditation is not about others. It has nothing to do with anything on the outside. It has to do within yourself. It has even nothing to do with you. Because this I is also created by someone else. My name, my daughter's name, this little one, she doesn't even have a name. I gave her the name. My parents gave me the name, so I have to protect that name that I didn't see throughout my life. Whereas, I am nobody. So, that again is somehow, you know, we think that we need to know something so that we can tell others, somehow we can be accepted by others, you know, that in the sense that we are something. We are too scared to be nothing. We are too scared to just experience life and move on. We just want to prove something to the, uh, to the world that yes, I am doing something, or I am being something, I am this, I am that. But doing so, we are missing the whole path. We are not being ourselves. We are just limiting ourselves into this, uh, these titles that we have created around us. So be free from that. Even be free from self-knowledge. You know, you're just living life. Just breathe and breathe out and experience life and move on. Simplicity is the only answer that you want in your life. There's nothing to prove in life. We are here for merely, what, 80, 90 years. I always say this. Life was going on before us. And life will go on after us. It's, there's, and when we are gone, you know, it doesn't matter. And before us, today, what, I mean, I don't know a, name, a guy named Joseph living in, like, I don't know where, in the 17th century. It doesn't really matter. What really matters is the, is the now, what you are doing with yourself. You cannot convince the world. You cannot come out and, you know, like, try to fit in a society or try to fit in the shoes which are not yours. You have to be that fragrance. You have to have your own inner beauty that people will come to you for who you are. It's not about your knowledge, what you have gained. It's all about your presence. So with spirituality or meditation, it's all about bringing in your true essence out. So whatever you know, drop it. It's not important. People made religion and thick, thick books that according to them have all the answers and explanation. These books aim to give you knowledge of God, man, etc. But none of the books give you realizations. So what is religion? Religion, if I want to say, most of the folks here are more exposed to Christianity. The person on which the religion is based was the one who was against the concept of religion. Jesus was against temples. He was against the idea of worshipping God. So what really happened in his life was that he was, he was killed and made religion out of it. So it's really confusing to really explain what religion is to the West. To the East, religion has a totally different meaning. There are 33,000 gods in India. So choose whichever god you want to follow. It's just a part of, I would say religion or God is somehow an escapism from taking responsibility for yourself. If I know I can do whatever I want to do in my life, maybe I'm being mean to others, I'm like doing something which is not right, but I can go to Sunday and confess and on Monday I'm okay, I would definitely follow that path because I'm not taking self-responsibility. Or in case of India, I can go to all the different gods that they are 
one god is for luck one god is for money one god is for this one god is for that so i can pray to those gods and get my blessings but i wouldn't do anything for myself i wouldn't take responsibility for who i am or my actions because there is like just like the government there is a hierarchy going on you pay your taxes or you pay your dues you somehow um you know like are escaping from your reality so that you have to you have to really uh be aware of because they will give you all the answers and explanation that your mind wants so that you don't take responsibility for yourself and these books aim to give you knowledge of god man etc so this is the whole point like i said knowledge is pain you can't really gain knowledge in life life is not about knowing life is all about experiencing so the more knowledge you gain um in the in the 18th century i do not even 18th century they say bc before christ or ad after death of christ like 2 3000 years ago like who cares honestly who cares i mean today you're living in 21st century that that is like such a disappearance it doesn't make any sense like we not really living in the stone age you know every every year we having a new iphone but we are still sticking to all concept of religion so that we can control our mind control ourselves and limit ourselves so break free from that too and all these uh, religion or books give you knowledge but none of them give you realization it's it's a simple example like uh growing up in school you know i have never seen a river and i was taught r i v e r is a river and i spelled it wrong and i failed my english examination and i was traumatized that i can't even spell river so the very word you know like ruined the whole experience for me rather than going at the river looking at the river you know experiencing the river i was confined in a room spelling the river having the knowledge of the river so that is something we all have to you know acknowledge that knowledge is not really important it's the experience the realization sitting next to the river breathing in the river you know feeling the energy exchange and jumping and coming out you know <laughs> that's the whole experience and realization is not about knowing they give stories that will not be of any help to you what jesus did what buddha did or how muhammad lived his life and what they all said is not important those were their realizations not yours so this is really important if you really <clears throat> understand the depth of of being called god of this ideology of you know being someone now if you see in the case of buddha which is more from the east uh he was not a buddha that we know today you know he was doing his work going village to village and he was not accepted often time he was shunned away from the village nobody even allowed him in the village because what are you doing here and today we say oh buddha is such a holy man and this and that oh jesus is such a holy man in his own time nobody was even listening to him so what 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 ever they said even muhammad he had his own uh, story so what all they said is not really important what really is important what they even said in the depth was go within yourself and be a light upon yourself you know you have to do the journey yourself nobody else is going to do the journey today we say you know um uh, uh, you know we have we have like we are so manipulative that we have even made theories about everything you know even buddha was a virgin uh, born out of a virgin woman Jesus was born of a virgin woman I think Muhammad also was born of a virgin this is all like ideology of purity like they are so pure but you have to realize something everyone is same nobody is greater than you nobody is less than you everyone has been in this experience of life so the buddha the jesus or whosoever you are seeking on the outside you are that go spend time with yourself go within yourself and you will seek all the answers they all were wise people who walked this earth and all they said was follow your own being and be a light unto yourself which is very essential in a broad way but then the question arises how to be a light unto yourself if you do not even know who this very being is you will find yourself asking who am i all these clouds of question where can and how can i see the light 
So this is something, you know, I should speak about. Uh, when I speak about to be a light upon yourself or to find this light, it's not another, you know, carry it on the, on, on the dangle. Now you have to find the light, run after it, search for it. It's not about finding. It's all about realization. You know, each and every one in this room has their own beautiful realization of life, have their own experiences. So within your own experiences, there are glimpses of truth. There are paths where when you were, you know, in a certain situation and the confidence that you had within yourself that, no, I have to, you know, be there for myself. I have to do this. I have to, you know, like get over it or, you know, like so many motivational things that you have said it to yourself. That is the light that will help you to go within. So when we talk about meditation, it's not about just an act of sitting down, closing your eyes and just, you know, blessing, bliss, you know, bliss out. I'm, I'm meditating now, I'm not responsible. I'm the most ir irresponsible person. I'm just sitting under a tree. I don't care what the, what's happening in the world. It's none of my business. Now that is ego meditation. That is, that is again, you're not taking responsibility for yourself. What I am bring, bringing forward to you about meditation is self-responsibility first. You have to be responsible because when you go within, it will be too scary for you if you don't really are prepared. You know, today people do medicine journeys and uh, beautiful, nothing right, nothing wrong about it. I've spoken about later in, in the book about it, but I want to share about those medicine journey is sometimes people go crazy like it's too much. Because you're not ready for it. Likewise, with meditation, you have to prepare. It's not something you just, you know, one day, okay, breathe in, breathe out, counting my breath, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to close my eyes. It's just on the surface. You're missing the whole aspect. Just like uh, when you take a jump in the river, the first five seconds is really like, ooh, what am I doing? But after those five, ten seconds, when you go deeper, it has a different depth, it has a different quality to it. So is meditation. If, it, if in the initial phase you just put your feet in and then run away, then you know you, you didn't do the whole process. And now you want to come out of the world and say the water world felt good. It's an ego. You have to stay in it 24 hours. That's what the quality of meditation is. So out of fear and to have this very security that what we do is right, religion is born. All religion, all spirituality, anything that anyone is telling you is somehow convincing you or bringing in fear in you that you have to follow. If you don't do the right thing, you will go to hell. If you don't pay your taxes, you will go to jail. If you don't follow a guru, something bad will happen in your life. These are all fear that we put on ourselves. For what? It's better to live in this elusive world or is it better to live in the hell that you're creating within yourself? Every week if you don't follow, you, there is always a hell is there. There is no escapism. But there is freedom from everything. And that freedom, that creator. Now, this God is very mean. The word God itself is very selfish. We have created this word God so that he is all about us. You know, like, God, please help me do this. God, please get me a car. God, please this. God, please that. La, 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 la. She wants the car. She wants the car. She wants to say God. <laughs> so, the idea here or the, or, the, or the realization here about speaking about God is not, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad thing or it's a good thing. I just want to share the depth of it. God is really selfish. I want you to go deeper and instead of calling a God, which is very self-centered, call it creator. When you call something creator, it has a different quality and you know, different meaning to it. If you call the creator of the universe, then somehow you have this humbleness and surrender that the creator has created everything. He has not only created humans, you know, he has created the bacteria in this very room. He has created the zillions of galaxies out there. Then you feel like you are part of the creator. 
then if the creator has created so much, you are part of his creation, that means creator lives through you. Then there are no worries. Then there is nothing to, you know, nothing to pray. Not, there is no hell in heaven because why would a creator who has created so many things would be so like mean about creating hells of a human life? You think he has time in this, in this gigantic cosmic timeology that you know he wants to like see you or what susan is doing tonight or what shiv is doing what she is doing what rose is doing he doesn't have like that god is mean that god is like he's like i think he's more like a very you know invasive person what i'm speaking about creator is is about freedom when you know there is a creator and you are part of his creation then there is nothing to worry about I always say this, if it's okay with the universe, it's okay with me. That phrase is somehow beautiful because anything that is happening in your life has nothing to do with the creator. He has not created your miseries. He has given you an opportunity to explore and freedom to do whatever you want to do. It's your own mind and limitation that is creating all the miseries. So you have to get over the fear that you are creating around yourself. And today you are old enough when you're growing up, when you are a child, in the school, there is a lot of fear put in you. You know, grades are bad, you will fail, don't listen to parents, something is wrong with you. But today you are at an age where you can realize that these were all chains that were bound to you. You don't have to abide by these things. When you follow a religion, you do not have to be scared or worried, but just go by the rules of the book and everything that you follow give the security of being right. Or you are told that you can do some posture of yoga as prescribed in books and then you will be at the center of your being. Oh, yogis also. <laughs> <laughs> so again, the concept of yoga and doing a posture, getting in the center of your being, it's again following a book, again following a teacher, again following a concept. But the whole ideology is who taught Buddha meditation? Who taught the yogi the yoga? You know, these are all self-taught things. And that's where the beauty is. Everything you have the capability to become. You have the capability to teach yourself. Why don't you create your own method, your own ideology? And you don't have to tell anyone about it. Because the outside doesn't really matter. Yeah, I met a lot of uh, yogis back in India that, you know, they are so rigid on their method, you know, that you have to have this this certain routine every day you have to do yoga in this position that position it is it is it is a good practice it's a good discipline but to what extent you know if, if your rigidness is making you lose the essence and the beauty of your teaching then it's not worth it people are ready to follow so-called gurus and guide books that say do this or do that but there is nothing to do in the first place. You don't have to search or follow. It is already there. The concept of doing this or that is very primitive. You know, we are somehow raised with the concept that we have to follow the rules. Otherwise, if we don't follow the rules, something is wrong with us. The society won't accept us. Uh, the friends won't accept us. Like like a simple example I would like to give is if you go in a social circle where uh, people, for instance, like to drink alcohol and if a person who doesn't drink alcohol tries to go in that group, it's really uncomfortable for the people who drink to accept him because they say something is wrong with him. It's a very basic example I'm using. So perhaps for that person, he will start, you know, trying to be which, something which he is not. This is what we usually do in our daily life. We meet new people, group of people. Just to be accepted, we will do what other people are doing. Although we, will, we won't like something, but we will force ourselves to do it. Is, it. is it worth it or is it not worth it? That's a question I don't want to answer. I want to leave it up to you. But what I really want to share today with you is that do not follow. Do not seek. The answer is not in, on the outside or or, or whatever you are seeking, the answer is much deeper, is in acceptance and surrender to yourself to say that it's okay to be you.
because there is nothing to follow and there is nothing to search, everything is already there or here. I have heard many people say like, be here now or be still. Uh, what does that really mean? It's not just a very, you know, like a very, uh, like a statement, like a movie dialogue that's like, ah, oh, be here now. It, when you speak about being here now, it's it's about being with yourself, with acceptance of everything that is happening around you. It, it's, a, it's a quality, like even in this very moment, you might experience yourself sitting stable, like nothing is moving. But on a very greater, grander scheme, we are revolving around the sun, which is moving in a flux somewhere in the universe. So our perception of life is very limited. We will never know. We will never know what the truth is if we try to seek it through our minds, if we try to seek it through our knowledge or our language. We can only realize truth, and that truth changes moment by moment. You can never step in the same river twice. You might have a realization in this moment. The very next moment, the realization is going to change. And here you are, trying to hold on to something which is not real anymore. It might sound confusing in this moment, but that is what path of life is. There is no absolute truth. But there is this joy and acceptance that it's okay. It's okay if, you know, uh, I'm in this experience of life, it doesn't make any sense, you know, whatever I've known, whatever I've been taught, my name, my parents, my, my culture. If you can say it's meaningless, then you will have a deeper meaning in life. I'm going to take a moment now Oh no, I'm going to read the next paragraph because this is important. After that, I'll take a moment. Do not listen to a single word I say. But trust me on this when I say that this whole idea is ridiculous as it is, as it is not going to lead you anywhere. Like I said, don't listen to me. I am just talking nonsense. So, but what I'm trying to share is that whole idea is ridiculous about religion, fear, yourself, myself. But what really is in the depth is to go within yourself and ask yourself, not from a place of knowing, but a place from inquiry, that who am I? Any questions so far? Marilla, we did. It keeps you grounded and calm. You're absolutely right. <coughs> it is just the staying <coughs> within yourself, because you are your own. But it takes a long time to kind of get a grasp of it because we don't really hear every single day, every single moment. It would be really nice if we did share, but we don't. Like, I liked it better when I called you Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> you can call him Chevy. You can call me. He doesn't care. I don't even call him. When I'm, like, super relaxed, I just call him Chev because it's easier than Shiv. I always yeah. say, God says, call me anything, just call me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Don't limit the word of God. Don't limit the name of God. Because then you won't see God everywhere. I like when you say creator. You know, I'm going to pass that on to my grandkids. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a really motivational one. That, that's a realization I had, you know. Because creator in itself is limitless. Because when you say I'm a creator or you're part of, or, or the creator itself of the cosmos, then you know it's not ending because the creator has not started and the creator has no end. <laughs> so you're just flowing. But, you know, like it's all about, you know, seeing the bigger picture in life. It's all about, you know, getting over your limitation. So I love the word creator myself. It's like it really changed my perspective and. I don't know where I discovered it, but it's been with me for a long time. All right, so uh, I'll move on. What page are you on? I'm page. Kind of, sort of. I'm on page six. So, what really is realization? First, before I read the paragraph. So, realization is something very you know, sacred. Realization is not borrowed. Like, I cannot give you a realization. 
Realization arises from within. The realization is an epiphany where you suddenly you're like, oh, wow, you know, that is something deep. And realization has, everyone has a, has a different realization in their life. And that is the beauty of life. We all are here to realize something. You know, if you, if you really think that uh, you're only limited to this human body that you are born, you know, and if you really don't really uh, recognize or acknowledge the consciousness that is happening through you, and that consciousness is very scientifically proven that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It transforms from one state to another, and consciousness is, is an energy. So when you were born, you were transformed from something to this. And when you die, and mind you, death is the biggest celebration of life. When you die, you are transformed into something else. So once you really understand this, this flow, this infinity flow, then you have this, 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 like, this life becomes whole realization because you're like here just to realize the self in this human body right now. Tomorrow you will be something else. Then your journey becomes for you to realize yourself in that. For me, my realization was being in a, in a conditioning in India. Everything was Indian. Left was right, right is left. Now coming to America, the realization has changed to another aspect. So the more you're flowing, the more you're allowing the life to happen through you, the more deeper your realization becomes that everything is flowing, everything is, but there's nothing constant in this world. And the only thing constant is change. So that is the realization. So realizations occur to you, it, it cannot be taught. Jesus has his realization, that's why he is Jesus. You know, he had his own beautiful realization. And personally, we, we don't we do not know Jesus as a human. We know Jesus as an energy. That energy is still living after two thousand years. That is his transformation. How he transformed himself. And when whenever, even if you're not a Christian, when you speak about Jesus, there is this this feeling that you feel. Mine is the religion. I'm not talking about religion. Here. I'm just talking about this energy. You feel this calm and love. Likewise, when you speak about Buddha, nobody knows about Buddha. Honestly, coming to the West, nobody knows about Buddha, but you feel this something about him. That is the transformation that you do with your energy. So, those are their realization. When you realize something in this world, something remains when you go. And that remaining path opens up, you know, portals for other people to realize their true self. Realization is not of the mind. Realization comes from the source within. Hmm. Source. So right now, what is this? I'm always like about this dance and stuff. What is this? What is this rhythm that we have been given in life? What is this like? I'm always dancing, this dance meditation. We all have been given a rhythm in this life, and that rhythm always stays with us till the time we are alive. Where is the rhythm? It's in a heart. That your heart is like boom, 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 boom. There's this rhythm given to us. And we all are dancing on that rhythm. So this rhythm arises from the source. Now this is something uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you. Hey, you're coming in front of the camera. Still right? <laughs> so uh, how do I explain this? Before you are conceived in your earthly mother's womb, there is an auric, your, your aura is born first. So science has proven that the first thing that born in your body is the heart and then there's a small hole that is left there and then the hole gets closed. Similarly, there is a auric heart that is created. From that auric heart, all the conscious information is passed on. So that is the source. Your whole life, you, you might think, yeah, this, is, this is something so funny, when you drive a car, you think that steering is the source, you're, gonna, you're turning, because that is visible. But what is running the car? It's the engine. If there is no engine, your steering is just like meaningless. Likewise, you might think our mind, our brain, our knowledge, what we perceive, our eyes, whatever we see is the reality. It is arising from a source, and the source is your heart. So everything, this is your powerhouse. So whenever you open your heart, always remember the rhythm. This is so cute. This is so cute. Oh. 
Okay, so this is the source within uh, that you are doing is coming from your heart. So realizations occur in your heart. Don't question yourself. Don't doubt yourself. Let your heart take over you. And if you think you're making mistakes, I say make thousands of mistakes. Because if you're making mistakes, you're growing. If you're not making mistakes, you are stagnant. You're not flowing. When you have doubts about a decision, be it of any nature, that is not a realization, but a projection of the mind, of what can be, rather than what in actuality is. Our mind is really beautiful. Our mind is here to, you know, if there is no mind, then nothing is possible. Then I would never be able to speak. Then you will never be able to digest what I'm saying. Mind is beautiful. But somehow, the mind is, is like the warrior that has been given, uh, given to us to protect us. And this warrior, growing up, has been gone through so many conditioning that is always protecting you. It is scared. So whenever a doubt occurs in your life, like for instance, uh, what should be what should be a good example of doubt is uh, should I or should I not? Uh, should I go and you know experience this new thing that I want to do, or should I not? Like I'm I'm running low on an example right now. <laughs> Anyone uh, have an example? Oh, this group. Oh yeah, this group. So, so here I am, like you know, speaking a different language and doing this group, reading, uh, reading a book. Should I do it or should I not do it? I never prepare. I just come here and I show up, and I'm always, you know, doing everything from the heart. As an example, is because the more you, the mind is about saving me, the mind would say, "Hey, you're not that confident. You don't even know English. Why are you writing this book? Why are you speaking this? You shouldn't do it. It's like they're gonna laugh at you. Something's gonna go bad." These are all the thoughts that the mind is projecting because growing up, it might have happened in my life that people might have laughed at me when I was spoken. But my heart always was like, no, go in the unknown, do it. And I have already discovered, you know, only rich and wealth of wisdom when I have taken the path of the unknown. So all the realization that, has, that will ever happen to you will only come from the heart, not from the mind, because mind is limited in its ability to process. Even if there is a doubt in the very center and deep down inside, you will always know what is right for you. So in my own personal life, you know, I've always been laughing. Whatever circumstances have been there, uh, I've, I've, I've been in, a, in, in Merchant Navy, I've been, uh, I've been an officer, and to be an officer has never been easy. We had to go through so many examinations, like, oh my God, like crazy examination. So I, I failed, like. I mean, the passing is 90%, so you can't always go 90, so I, I paid like 85 or something. It was really, really hard because uh, you have to pay so much money. As a student, you know, you don't have that much money. It, I was really sad one time, but deep down inside, I was laughing. I was like, why am I laughing? I did not understand. <laughs> like, I failed like an examination. I have to get another 500 Singapore dollars. I have to like get this thing done. It's like, but I'm laughing inside. All my friends are looking at me like, he's lost it. But, you know... Later on, now today I look at it and I, and I again I'm laughing because deep down inside I know it's you know it's it's all a game. Mm -hmm. This life is just a play, and we just get too serious about you know achieving and all this and all that, and then we then we lose the play. You know it, it's it's uh, it's about you go in a playground and you want to be on the swing, but you're too serious. Okay, I have to swing at this angle, and I have to make sure that the velocity is this much, <laughs> and I have to make sure that I don't miss that part. You know, then you're too serious. Then you're missing the whole part of swinging so this is this is exactly what life is it's not about being serious it's about experiencing and enjoying it because nothing is certain you know that swing is going to stop one day because of gravity or this or that so enjoy it till the time you're in it all you have to do is be yourself and being yourself does not mean you start doing unnecessary things and justify them by saying I'm being myself First feel yourself and then be yourself and be responsible for your own self, a lot of self here. So what does it really mean to be yourself? Well, I can tell you what that didn't, what that was confusing for me at first. Mm -hmm. I think when you were writing that, it's like this idea where people are afraid of being themselves because they've been so controlling themselves since they were children because their parents controlled them. Don't do this. 
behave nicely, da 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 da. And then you grow up and you don't have your mom telling you to do that anymore, but you now are like, be nice, smile at the people, and, and you're so controlling. So there's this fear, like, what if I'm myself and I'm just like a raging asshole or something, you know? Like, I'm, gonna, I'm a rude person. And this actually happened to me. Like, I didn't know if I was nice. It was like, I honestly was so nice to people, but it was very fake because I was told to be nice. And one day I let go of the idea of being nice. And I was afraid that I wasn't nice. I didn't know if I was. And I saw, I witnessed actions that were very kind that I naturally did. And I realized I was a nice person, but I actually realized it. I didn't know I was nice. I had to, I had to, I had to experience, I had to not care. You can have that. And then I realized I was nice. And now I know I'm nice, but I don't have to be. I just, I just am. And if I'm not nice, it's okay. Because I don't have to be nice. I know deep down I'm a kind person, but that's something it took me a while to learn and to realize. But I think at first it's scary because I was like, I'm just not going to care anymore. And I, you know, a lot of people that, you know, my parents and things when I like had my journey, I, um, they didn't think I was very nice. Okay, thank you. What's interesting about <laughs> Shut up, mom. <laughs> is... Sorry. To piggyback on what on what you're saying is that Whew. if you're fortunate enough to have grandchildren, you can teach them to be themselves. That's because the flip side of what you're saying is what I'm teaching my grandchildren now. The parents' job is to teach them the rules. Mm -hmm. The grandparents' job is to teach them how to recognize love and to be themselves they'll know the difference because if they're fortunate enough to have grandparents who are interested in their lives, right, uh, then that realization for some of these kids will happen a little bit sooner. They'll know to be nice or be themselves because, hey, grandma says that, Nani says that, no, no, behaves that way. You know, it's through the example. So sometimes you can't see it because you're too close to it. So when you're raising children, like I'm saying, your job is to teach them to be kind, but it also to fit into society, where I can say, hey, I'm going to babysit you. Mm -hmm. And because the majority of people don't think like you should, because if they did, this room, this block would be filled with people. You have auditoriums, and that's what you're getting to. But my wisdom of being twice your age, is that I can see that. I'm having that out-of-body experience like what you're talking about. I'm literally feeling it. So you're on to something, is what I'm saying. That's all. <laughs> That's all. If that made sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does. It's just a different perspective from it. You know, I really understand what you're saying because uh, I remember when I was I was really young. I was raised by my nanny, like my grandmother. He was actually raised by his grandmother. Yeah, so that might be also a different. So you know, yeah, like yeah. I, I do both sides. My parents were giving me rules, and my grandmother was showing me the love. Yeah. Exactly what you're saying. I, I recall it. Yeah. So I was more prone to my grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> and you. for my kids, I'm doing the same. I, I'm not like putting. I know they have to live in society. But I'm doing it something different because I want to change the whole model. Good. I want to like I don't want to like uh, give them rules. I want them to experiment, but I want to give them an environment that is safe enough for them to experiment. So in, in experimenting within a boundary of what's yeah yeah what what, what is safe. yeah I mean uh, it's it's more like you know they can be near the fire, yeah. but they they're not gonna like touch the fire. You know, like I'm there for for the extremes. So about being yourself, you have to really understand. First, when you start, you know, getting into spirituality or meditation, and once you first start discovering the surface of being yourself, there is this outburst, this rage that I want to be like wild. It's normal. It happens. You want to go out and give you know, like extreme cases. You want to vandalize the wall, or you know, you're like you want to you want to be like uh, you want to like express yourself with your partners, with your family. First, the, uh, you are rebelling because you're getting this freedom to rebel. You're getting this freedom to, you know, like I can, which is very good. But you have to transform that rebellious nature from on the outside to the inside. So this is a transformation that you have to do. 
Now, for now, why am I saying this is because I myself was on this path. First, when I started rebelling on the outside, I, 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 uh, like on the ship, I said I gave up my uh, uniform, I grew a beard, and all this and that. I was rebelling on the outside, but then I started rebelling on the inside on my ideologies, on what I was following, which was very transformational. Because it's very easy to come out and yell and say, hey, I don't care, you know, like I'm done with you, I'm, I'm, I'm being myself from now on. But there's a beauty when you transform the rage into love, into compassion. And that will only come when you surrender within yourself and say it's okay. You know, the real rebellious person is the one who rebels against himself, not against the society. I use all these examples that society has conditioned you, your childhood, your parents, your teacher. It's not to make you against all your religion. It's, it's more to awaken you to the fact that this, this rebelliousness is within you. You have to, you know, like embrace it. But you have to embrace it in constructive way, not in destructive way. Just going to say, I sort of went through a process like she was saying about kind of a nothingness experience, and after that I had a few months of, of not knowing whether I was nice or not, and not needing to be nice, and sometimes I would say the truth, but people didn't want to hear it, but it, I had to learn the skill of saying things lovingly that were the truth, because I had been so into you know, being, being nice that I didn't know how to, I didn't have a skill mm. for saying the truth, I had to learn it. Thank you for sharing. It was probably tough. How did it feel? Uh, it was kind of strange to say the truth and find that people were doing. Well, you know, I mean, my friends even. But so it was, then, then I had to learn how to the tone, the tone, and 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 the of it as opposed to the gentle skill of speaking the truth. But also on your own behalf, and I've been there. And eventually, everybody has to go through that fire. You have to touch that fire. And what I, what I was talking to with friends that are trained in this area, not just spiritually and emotionally, like Jeff, who is outstanding in the perception and devotion that he's awakened within himself, but the psychologists, the people that are trained in this area, those of us who've had experience that fire, we're setting those boundaries as well. It may come across as we're being maybe a little rough around the edges or cracked or whatever. It's, it's their perception. What we're doing is we're mirroring back how we have to protect ourselves. Those are boundaries. Those are called boundaries. So I, I actually salute you and applaud you for being able to be able to do that because look where you're at. It's not so bad. It's all about Still. intention. If you don't intend, I mean, yeah. if you are being responsible if your intention isn't to be good. Yeah, because some people really push those boundaries. You can try to be as spiritual and kind as you want, but it's it really, I think that's what I'm getting out of shit or I'm in the wrong book club. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah, is, you know, I've had to purge people, like purge them. Why? You know, because it's a, it's too much work. Mm -hmm. I like the calm. I don't want to be around that anymore. And if their walk is not at least going in the same direction, that means we're going this way to begin with. So how do you get, well, I've come around as much as I can. I mean, I've even grabbed a hold. And then that energy and that source that he was talked about, I've looked at like almost out-of-body experience when he's talking, because that's like, I remember doing that, and it's like that source and energy has like taken me down, where I'll have this vibration where it is so strong, so healthy, so good, and I'll be around somebody, and instantly, I'm like, exhausted. I'm just, oh my God. You know, and it's like, I can't change you, I can't protect you, I have to let you go. I just have to let you go, and I just have to be. And they'll either find their way or they won't. So, wow, that was a presentation. I don't know where did that go? I don't know where the hell that came from. Must be something in the water today. Or whatever. But you know, anyway. 
Does that make sense? Does it sound no, no, it makes it makes sense. It does. Like, yeah, boundaries, and then to like know that you can be your own boundary. Yeah. I didn't know that part. So mm -hmm. like I sucked in everybody's yeah. energy, yeah. and and I thought I needed to take it. And then it's like no, you don't. And that was so exhausting uh. all the way mentally, physically, emotionally, everything. Spiritually, and it's like, and then that's where I got to a point like, I can't, I can't be around you. I can't do this. It's just like, and that's where I started. I finally like said no and had to make a change. And I started like, like kind of being in nothingness of being yeah. away from all that, and then, and then kind of starting to figure out what, where am I? What is true? What do I want? What are what attracts me because that's yeah. what I want. And it's been a huge process, but it's like a lot, a lot of the conditioning comes through, and especially in mind, it's like, I just had to take it all in. We don't, but we, but we, but, but that, like, programming of, like, being nice and being accepted and being in the mode, being in the box. I think it's more about exactly what is the boundaries or the structure or you know like speaking up for yourself is actually taking responsibility for yourself you take responsibility that i don't want to be like you know hurt by others i don't want to be like manipulated by others i don't want to do this anymore so this is where you know you take the responsibility and this is all you know what spiritual path really means it's not something like you wearing white dress now you know like it's not about that a spiritual path really means you know standing up for yourself we are like 7 billion people in this world, maybe more, and, you know, we'll be eaten away if we don't really stand up for ourselves, if we don't take responsibility for ourselves. And that is what the journey of life or spiritual journey is about, is like standing up for yourself and surrendering to something bigger than you. You know, and that is not human. That bigger thing is not human. You have to really understand that, you know, the path to spirituality is not something that excludes you from the world. The path of spirituality is bringing this oneness, you know, bringing the both worlds together, bringing in the balance. So that's that's one of the things that, you know, most of the people, like even the first chapter is all about. It's not about, you know, now I'm spiritual, that means now I'm done with the world. Now I don't have to live in the world. When you are really genuinely getting into spirituality, you are resembling the lotus flower. The lotus always comes out of the mud and has its beauty but the roots are always in the mud you know it stays in the mud but it shines its beauty so you have to live in the society and <laughs> people are not going to listen to you they're going to call you wacko or you know i don't know what's wrong with him but you have to live your truth you have to radiate that beauty like you care for yourself and that beauty will show others that they can care for themselves that is the only path of a teacher or or your your purpose if you want to share about through the world and that will only come when you start taking responsibility for yourself first you rebel on the outside then you rebel on the inside then you make the boundaries then you realize that you know uh, you know you have this beauty about yourself you can go and do it this is all a path it's, it's, it's all and we all have to go through it it's not that something someone is special that he is each and everyone on this planet is going through this growth process in their own way in their own, you know, way of how they perceive it. But everyone is going through the same thing. I call it being discerning. That's become my new way of just looking at the choices that I make, kind of like what you were talking about, just being discerning <coughs> and caring enough for myself to make good choices for me so that I can be the best person in the world and shine as much love. But I love the lotus because I love that it grows in the mud. Yeah, it's just, beauty. it's the coolest thing ever. And I just love notices. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next paragraph. What page? I think we were six. six. Yeah, still on six. Once you know yourself, all questions and doubt will disappear. And like it or not, you will no longer be able to hurt yourself, but will only be able to love yourself. And once this realization sinks in that you cannot hurt yourself, you will find that you cannot hurt anything else, not even the smallest form of life. Love grows within and blossoms on the outside. 
this is actually really beautiful if you really you know understand uh, the concept of love and hurt so when we love someone it can be really selfish it can be really self-centered like I love you because I have these feelings for you now you have to be mine or you have to be with me because I have this love for you and if you don't love me back you are hurting me because you are not acting upon what I expect out of you it's an expectation so once you get into uh, the philosophy of meditation as what it is you will start seeing that first firstly like the first few paragraphs are saying that there's nothing to seek there's nothing to know there are no question you know answers once you get over the, that phase the second phase that would come would be the hurt part now let me say this very straightforwardly uh, there are no, I mean, there are, but there are not any traumas in life. You know, you have to really get over it. You trauma know, or trauma? traumas. It's a addiction. If you want to be addicted, you will always be like, you know, something is bad happened to me in the past. I mean, it's true it happened, but you are reliving it every moment because you are reigniting that trauma in the now. The point is to let it go. That hurt happened. If you didn't learn from that hurt, it's going to keep on hurting you every instance of your life because you're not willing to grow, because you're not inviting the love. Love is an antidote for everything in this world. So once you are getting over hurt, you start realizing what love really means. It has nothing to do with your love to another person, another animal, this life, or, you know, this earth, this universe, blah, 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 blah. Love has nothing to do with that. Love is the driving force of consciousness. This you will understand one day. Without love, nothing can be created. I mean, everything that is happening beyond our... 90, all right, three percent of this world is visible. This universe is visible. Ninety-seven percent is invisible, and that hundred percent is in love. Once you start realizing love, the depth of love, the emotion of love, there is no description for love. They, you can't like say, "Ah, oh, I love you," like you know, you have those emotion. Those are emotion, but that is not love. Love is much deeper. Love is just like this ocean, just being there, and from that ocean. The fishes are living in it. Life is prospering. And from that ocean, the cloud is coming with rain on the land, giving life on this earth. And from that love, you know, we are created as a byproduct. And from us, we are creating so much in love. So it's, it's an ongoing process. It's, it's, it's a very deep meaning. And when you finally realize this depth of love, you can't hurt anyone, not even the tiniest atom around in this world. Because you start seeing that atom or that insect or that bacteria or whatsoever, the virus even, as part of you. Because you acknowledge its existence, that means you acknowledge your existence. Because we all are mirroring each other. If I'm left in Mars by myself, I, I, I wouldn't have whom I will speak to. What will, how will I express myself? If I don't express myself, I would be going crazy. because. We all need to express ourselves because I need to see myself in you. We need to see each other in ourselves. That's what we do. If, if you see, if you look at a flower or a, or a tree, you see its beauty. It's not the beauty that you see of the flower. It's the beauty that you see within yourself. So we all are just mirroring each other. Whatever good you see in me, I'm just sitting silently because that is the good you see within yourself. You're not seeing that good in me. You're seeing that good within yourself. So that is how life is. Because you're not, whatever you call me, whatever I'm sharing, he's so great, he's this and that. I'm not. Because I know who I am. That greatness is within me. That greatness you acknowledge within yourself. You make me cry. Well, and conversely, if you, if you are irritated by someone, the only place to look is within. It's, it's, a, it's a gift. Conversely, yeah. yeah. What is it about me? I can't be with or really careful. Where can I grow? 
and I think the best place to grow like that is with a partner and with children. <laughs> yes, for sure. So and wallpapering <laughs> with a partner. <laughs> And I wanted to say something about that trauma that you said, because you said it in a very, like, you know, stark way, but I agree with it, and that's why I've shifted my whole practice. And I don't know if it was, like, because of you or just I already discovered it on my own, I think, realizing that I wasn't helping certain people that just kept talking about their trauma over and over again. And I'm like, why are they not getting better? And then I started doing, you know, learning about trauma work and realizing that, EMDR, all those tools, they're just tools to, to clean the system of the brain, to kind of like reboot those systems. So you're like, okay, and then if you do well in EMDR or all those trauma things, basically this is what you end up looking like. That car accident happened to me, but it was in the past, and I'm cool now. I'm fine. It happened to me. It sucked. I'm not happy that it happened. I'll never be happy, but I don't need to think about it. I don't need to bring it up, and I don't need to make excuses, so... That's kind of how I see trauma in terms of what you were saying. No, I mean, and Shiv really lives that way. I mean, he never even told me his history until recently. <laughs> then I said it to everyone. Then, like, I mean, then, then he went a little <laughs> overboard. Yeah. But it was great, yeah. Well, I mean, over. Like, I'm going to be in the magazine. <laughs> uh, now, what, what she's saying about trauma, I want to share something. Like, I don't want to name the place, but there is a grocery store in Bend. Where you know there's a frozen section where there's this frozen bread that we like, and uh, you know a couple of times I got electric shock from opening the door. So from last couple of months, you know the shock has. I mean they fixed their door, but deep down in my mind, you know the body responds to the to the physical trauma. Like it, it is there, but somehow you know I always tell myself it's a new moment. You know, if I get shocked. I got shocked in this moment. If I don't get shocked, then I shouldn't be thinking about it. So, you know, like she's a clinical psychologist. She knows a lot of things which um, I'm, I'm not really, you know, Knowledge. knowledgeable. But, uh, but I mean, when I say that, you know, whatever I said, it was really sharp. It was really like direct. It was really like, it's coming from love. It's coming from love from that perspective that wake up, get over it. It's not coming that I don't acknowledge it. You know, it's coming more from uh, from a place of letting you know that it's okay. Intention. Again, it's intention. Yeah, Your intention it's the intention, is, yeah. Is for love. Yeah. It's not the words, it's the intention. You mean the shock is? I lost something. No, the shock, the shock of get over your trauma. And I think, you know, having the job I have, I would say that that's what I encourage people to do. But I am skilled to help them help themselves. You know, so it's like sometimes you don't know. Sometimes, you know, you're at a certain age and, and a certain amount of traumas and you don't know. So you need help sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, it's too like, I mean, we're being in the present moment. I'm not taking it. I'm just being in the present moment. Not to be in that past all the time or even the future. I mean, you really need to be, um, and we're meant to be, I mean, we're energy. So we're meant to be moving and experiencing is what I'm realizing. So it's like when you're like stuck in the trauma or stuck in the past of, or you have to do it this way or whatever, you're not you're not being in the present, being one way or the other. You're not really being in that moment or you know, being in the nothingness or whatever. You know, having an experience what it comes yes. to the, some of the realization I'm coming into. Are, we're meant to be moving. We're meant to be going through life, experiencing, realizing stuff about ourselves. It's not just I'm X because of this. Yeah. Yeah. Mom. Mom. The mind is a beautiful thing. Accept your mind. Accept and feel the pain, fear, and doubts of your mind. In the very acceptance, you will effortlessly open the door to your source, your inner being. So, you know, like like I have always said this, and, uh, you know, I always speak about the oneness. There is no separation. When, you know, when especially when people get into meditation, they're fighting. They're like, oh, I need to shut my mind. It's a monkey mind. I need to let go of the thought, this and that. And, you know, you somehow are fighting. And 
there's a very simple, you know, like it's a very practical thing. What you sow, you will reap. You know, if you go in with this attitude that you have to shut your mind, then, you know, you're going to turn into a vegetable, which is meaningless. You might, you might succeed in numbing your mind. Then you are just like sitting there doing nothing. Then you're like missing. Then you're, then you are really like not understanding what really, you know, what really the essence of meditation is. It's not about shutting one thing down. It's, it's, then you're escaping, escaping from the reality that is within your world. You know, meditation is not escapism. Meditation is more like, you know, br bridging everything. So what really is meditation? Meditation is uh, based on five pillars or five principles. The first one is relaxation. The second one is observation. And from observation comes the silence. So all the techniques that we do is to relax, you know, like we are breathing and you know, like whatever techniques you follow, even dance meditation is a technique. Breath work is a technique. So these techniques are to, you know, relax your body, your, your, your mind, you know, your essence. From that relaxation, you know, that's not it. Meditation is not all about relaxation. There's something more. It's an observation. Now, when you start observing your thoughts, you start fighting your thoughts, you have to shut the monkey mind. You have to, like, the mind is still fine with that. You can't go in with that attitude because then it's going to backfire. You have to always work smart, not work hard. You have to always be smart in your approach. So once you're observing, whenever the thoughts are coming, let the thoughts be there, you know, they are part of you. The, the mind is giving you those thoughts because, you know, it's traumatized, it's like shock, like what's going on, like I'm just like born in this world and suddenly, you know, there are so many people telling me what to do, you know, I'm not really living an authentic, authentic experience. So listen to your thoughts and then just realize, as, as I'm saying, so many people are trying to control me, that means this language has been put into my mind, it's it's somehow, you know, embedded in my mind. It's, it's not me because I was born with nothing. I didn't even know a language. So from that, you come to silence. And many of the people and most of the, you know, people who have discovered meditation just think silence is the ultimate. Now you're silent, now it's, that is it. But that's not the truth. From that silence, you have to move forward. You have to create something. Creativity is really important. Otherwise, your meditation will be wasted. It will be grounded. It has no meaning. Everything is life is creating. Like, if you even look at the beauty of a flower, which is just silently just being, it is creating life because through its beauty, a honeybee comes to it, pollinates it, creates a new seed through it, and from that seed, millions of other flowers come to it. From that creativity, you will suddenly realize that you come to the fifth pillar, which is celebration. You celebrate your life. And meditation is all about celebrating your existence. It's not about escaping like, now my worldly things which I did didn't work, now I want to be spiritual. Money is not the thing now to be spiritual. It's all about, you know, creating that balance. It's all about being that lotus. You know, staying in the mud but still radiating the beauty and celebrating your existence. So, the mind is not bad. Don't, don't fight your mind. Embrace your mind. And feel your doubts and fear of your mind. And when you start feeling the doubts and when you start uh, facing your fears, you will realize they don't even actually exist. Because then suddenly, you know, uh, something will happen as you proceed that you will start realizing that I am right now sitting here. You know, I was, I'm not sitting in that car. You know, I'm not in that car crash. I also had a car crash. And uh, I'm not sitting in that car. You know, it's, uh, it's not here. So from that, you know, you keep on moving forward in your life. That's how you get over. Um, yeah, we we our language makes us say that there are thoughts, but I think what I want to say is that I have no control over what comes into my mind. It's not my thought; it just comes in. But then, what I do with it is kind of some. I mean, I like I say, I, you know, nobody can control what comes in. Not, not taking it seriously because it's not your thought. <laughs> so it just came. That's 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 so beautiful. Yeah, that that's how the thought comes. And and another thing I want to share right now with you is that my sincere effort is to annoy you. <laughs> is to annoy your philosophy. Everything that you think, I'm, 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 everything I do is very intentional, but with love. 
My intention is to annoy you, your philosophy, your ideology, to show you how serious you are, to show you how rigid you have become. You're not taking life, you know, enjoying you, taking life too seriously. And I have got in trouble many times, um, but like I really love it. Back in back in India, I used to go to all the all the pundits, the gurus, and all those stuff, and I would annoy the heck out of them. And they wouldn't laugh; they were too serious. And then then I started laughing. And you know that that's why I even give you the power to to make fun of me. Don't let me be too serious because these things can be serious, you know. So make fun of me also because that's how we teach each other. There is no teacher as such. There is always this fun loving way of teaching each other that you know your way is you know it's it's free but like you know don't be too rigid in the freedom as well it's always about being funny and and about when i speak about especially i'm i'm speaking about people who follow buddhism buddha never followed buddhism himself you know buddha was not about structure he was it took him 6 years he went into the forest and it took him 6 years to get enlightened whatever that means but when he got enlightened he started laughing and what he was laughing about was that it took him 6 year to realize the simplicity so you can realize in this moment and be you know whatever you want to be see one thing such a dananda was a kind of guru for a while and he used to say in his in the voice if you take life seriously you're in serious trouble and then he would just <laughs> laugh and laugh <laughs> and that's that's he he is absolutely right don't take life too seriously once you admit yes this is my fear and identify the fear it disappears and the first ray of this new sun awareness shines in you so you know fears and what what really is awareness you know awareness is very really simple awareness is the power So remember one thing you are master of your mind the mind is not your master and this is the awareness that you have to bring in all the fears is like the mind is like just like a projector uh, which is projecting a movie which has happened in the past so it's just like old old past experience oh man you got to be very careful you know drive carefully you remember we I'm talking about accidents you know? <laughs> so, so you know like drive carefully because you know one time you messed up and this and that it's just projecting old things but once you become the master of your mind you're like yeah it happened but you have this awareness that this new moment has new things to offer you know there are new experiences so this is where what really awareness is about is just getting this this beauty this this thing within you that you are greater than your thoughts you are greater than what you know you are unpredictable that i always say is like always be under unpredictable don't be limited don't say or plan things just do them and see the difference so in life don't plan anything just be unpredictable you know just choose a random road and start walking or choose a random country and start living in there like what i'm doing but you know that's the beauty of life is it's about being spontaneous that that is the spark otherwise you know mundane like 9 to 5 job then do this and then die one day you know like it's it's meaningless always be like in the unknown because the more you're unknown the more alive you are the more you know intelligent you are and uh, intelligent i i had this this realization yesterday i want to share about intelligence and consciousness hmm i forgot never mind not important maybe so this is this is what i want to share is that you know always be doing things which are challenging or which are new to you don't do the same old things don't put the gps on just drive you know because and 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 the moment you start driving you know first few moments will be a little uncomfortable like i don't know where i'm going but then slowly you will realize you have the power to make the turn wherever you want to and this body is just like your car you know this this life is just the play and you are the you are in charge of this play you can do whatever you want to do there are no limitation the creator has no limitation he has created billions and billions of species on this one planet i mean some we can't we don't even know he is not limited to humans and he is not really interested in what you do in your life he is beyond that so be like the creator have the quality of the creator within you and create your own reality 
So I'm going to stop here today. Any questions or anything you want to share? Just I like the expansion. I've been feeling an expansion of my thoughts, feelings, which I appreciate. Like go get lost. Yeah. I do a lot of predictability. And I like it when I just decide to ask the universe, source, what do I, what should I do right now? Instead of having a plan. I would say don't even ask, you know. Just remember the example of the swing. Yeah. It's not about going forward and up forward and back it's all about you know enjoying it and you know doing things that you have not done I mean if right now I have kids so I can't say this but if you have the freedom just drive away you know like leave Bent just drive and see a new experience I try to fit that in when you can yeah. <laughs> jobs sometimes make that oh yeah job as well like people expect you at certain times or you can still have some randomness in between the expectations of people planning to be somewhere Exactly, you don't have to do, you know, the whole thing, the, the next hour perhaps, you know, if you, mm -hmm. if time's long, next hour just, you know, just start walking or do, do something which you haven't done before. Right, take right. a different way to work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. It's just that expansion, as I say. Yeah, the that's good. That's good. Yeah. I try to do it as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. It's healthy. Yeah, because we, we like to be in our tracks or you know, same old, same old. Yeah. It, it gets really easy. To get I have a saying that <clears throat> I've been using for probably 27 years. You're never lost. You're just on an adventure. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know where I heard that, but I've taken it on for forever. So when I first moved to Ben, that was the per I used to say it all the time as I get so frustrated at a dead end where somebody's call would tell me. It's a good place to be with a singer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that, right? Another circle. Another circle. <laughs> Where's this one go? And where was I going? <laughs> a lot of times. Well, thank you, Shiv. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Did you have your plastic bowl you wanted to pass, or? Oh. Yeah, you can. You thank can. You for uh, reminding us. 